This is Pixelated Audio, Music Disc Volume 2, featuring the Firecracker Music Collection Volume A. Welcome back to the bi-weekly video game music and retro gaming podcast, Pixelated Audio. We're your hosts, James and Brian, and today we're bringing you Pixelated Audio Music Disc Volume 2. Yes, today we're going to be listening to a music disc titled Firecracker Music Collection Volume A, Comicat 42 Special for the PC-88, and this is using the Soundboard 2 or the YM-2608, released on August 16th of 1992. The track that brought us in was called Tetra Freaks from Tetra Force, composed by Kemuel. It's a pretty cool track. Yeah. It's got a lot of, uh, it's like you're, you know, in a gang getting ready to break skulls, you know? I like yeah. it. It's cool. Yeah, it does have that, like, um, kind of intense uh, jam session feel, but uh, it's kind of over by the time it gets started. Yeah, it, it's, it's not very long. Uh, yeah. That's what we wanted to come in with it. You know, it's short. Yeah. Uh, you know, he even says in the internal text here, he's like, uh, I was told this didn't really turn into a song, an actual song, because it's so short. Right. Yeah, so. I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool, but you know. Yeah, I know it's seconds. cool, but it's always great to start the show with something short so we can really just get into the episode and get going. Yeah. So, uh, volume two of our music disc kind of series. Uh, we did our first one with Orfe music disc on the first of the year, and uh, we, you know we're going to kind of scatter them out over the over the year. But um, the Dojin scene uh, was really big in Japan on the PC eighty eight ninety eight Sharp X sixty eight thousand. A lot of the uh, FM chip stuff, and we're kind of you know exploring some of the. Uh, different music discs that have been released and stuff and we're gonna you know throw them into little episodes like this and we've got a great selection of music today i'm excited to go through it so a little bit about firecracker they are a dojin group that started in 1990 like many other dojin groups they sold their discs at comicets and pasoquets however it's kind of turned into a one-man army with kemu being the only active member so it's a little bit less of a Dojin group and more of a personal collection of work. Right, right, right. I did get a chance to speak with Kimmel a bit, so maybe we can get him on a show down the road. Maybe. Uh, to talk about his stuff, yeah. But he's done like over 40 different music discs. So oh, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've got plenty of time. Yeah, no rush there. <laughs> yeah. But this track, no, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's really short, but I love that, that really crunchy bass, nice drum beat, and uh, then it's over. Yeah, it's very heavy and, and punchy. It's uh, Everything's very defined. I really liked it. Yeah. So it was for a game called Tetra Freaks by MiaSoft or MIA Soft. Kemul, I did ask him a few things about the track, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But his real name is Takahiro Yone Muda, and he's an artist from Hyogo, Japan. Very active in the doujin scene, and also contributing to a ton of releases and arranged albums. He's done stuff with Mega Fepsu. Synergy, Unison Label, done music in quite a few doujin games, for, like this one we just heard, Tetra Force by uh, MIA Soft or Mia Soft. A bunch of games for Iron Gear, which is a company, like another doujin company, mm-hmm. uh, TFS and DGen. And then he's also contributed to a handful of commercial titles. There was um, a company called Aqua Plus that did a bunch of stuff for Ponytail Software, Tenshindo, and TGL. And there was also Leaf, but... Um, you know, not really any of these titles or even companies are well known outside of Japan. Right. Yeah. No, but it's just, it's uh, definitely surprising that with 40 music discs under his belt and still a laundry list of companies that he's worked for, for, you know, doujin games or commercial releases. So Yeah. And a lot of stuff he's done is just like rearrangements or sound effects or sound engineering. It's just kind of like a combination of all sorts of stuff. Uh, but we got we got some really great music lined up. James, what do we have next? Yeah. So speaking of arrangements, our next track is an arranged track by Kemul called Vapor Trail. And we'll be right back.
All right, you just heard Vapor Trail, composed by Gamma Delic and arranged by Kemul. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. This is really cool, man. So 90s, very uh, like heroic and synthy and driving. and Got a nice rock beat to it. Yeah. I love the galloping on the, the hi-hats. You know, uh-huh. it's just like, tss, 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 oh, I love it. So yeah. good. There's a lot of really nice uh, support stuff going on in the background. And, mm-hmm. um, and the parts where the drums, it was like, dead end didn't like right. it reminded me of uh like punch out and stuff like that yeah so i was like oh that's pretty cool the difference is you know like if we heard this like a live band you'd hear um like but in in those breaks you know you get that da da you'd hear kind of like the, the symbol kind of riding a mm-hmm. little bit you get like maybe some some background noise but with the fm he stops everything so you get this silence so it's almost a little bit off-putting and uncomfortable right uh, it's different than like a live listening to like a live band but it's still it's still really awesome. Yeah, it's you have to get used quality. to it a little bit. Yeah. Like when he first started doing it in this track, I was like, oh, this, this sounds like messing up. But then it's like, no, this is pretty cool. Like yeah. I liked the, the stop. It was very abrupt and everything was very punchy and it drew your attention, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, in the liner notes for this, he says, uh, this version, uh, this is a version that I rewrote when I made the PC-98 version for volume nine because the drums were awful. <laughs> uh, so I guess he just wanted to kind of redo those drums. But the percussion was killer in this this track so um you know i kind of need to go back and listen to that other version so you yeah can compare well but, i mean the the percussion gets such a front row and you know center stage performance in this track i could see not being happy with it like needing to fix it so right and you know it all goes back to the original composition too and like how well he you know was able to make his own arrangement of it mm-hmm. and um so gamma delic was dad east in-house band uh, it was basically just a bunch of Daddy East composers. Uh, the name is kind of a pun on game and delicious. So it's like Gamma Delicious. You know? <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah. Uh, one of their names, one of the candidate names that they had picked out was um, Oh My Deco, which uh, doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> but uh, but the members were Hiroaki Yoshida, Seiichi Hamada, and Akira Takemoto. Again, this is just a cool track, and the original composition is stellar, and this arrangement is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool to hear on the, uh, you know, through the YM2608. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I think the original was Arcade uh, 2151, maybe it's 2151, and then there was a Genesis port right. as well. Anyways, so let's get into our next track. This track is called Minor One, and it is an original by Kimul. You just heard Minor One, composed by Kemmel, and this was from a game called Legend of No Ten, developed by Iron Gear. It's a pretty awesome track. Yeah, no, and, and I love hearing an original track right after an arranged one, so you can see like not only their style, but then now this is their personal style. Right. This is not them just you know taking a song that already exists. And this song was really rad. I really liked it a lot. Yeah, and to kind of go with that too, I think that we're going to kind of see some originals and some you know arrangements mm-hmm. and kind of starting to see his 
his kind of flair thrown into everything right. and like what he kind of values in the you know musical and in, in the certain compositions so uh it's pretty awesome this track uh it does have a few loops so uh it's not incredibly long in the sense that uh there's really a lot going on but uh he, you know he changes key and stuff like that and it's it's overall it's a really cool track it's really busy yeah no yeah there's definitely a lot going on and it's you know it's very punchy and upbeat and it's got a fast um you know fast rhythm to it but there was some some different notes that made it have a, a sorrowfulness to it. There was mm-hmm. like those flutes or whatever, and those flutes also reminded me of like slide flutes. And then when they was doing the <laughs> stereo panning, I just imagined some guy with a slide flute like popping up in one ear and just going, Woo, and woo, then going and in like, the next ear, yeah, woo, yeah. That's... But uh, it was cool. I really liked this track. It was it was fun and had you know a lot going on, but it was a lot to to love about it. Well, maybe that's why he titled it Minor One because it's like minor, you know, they're in a minor chord most of the time, mm-hmm. and then he switches to the major. Uh, maybe that's where you get that sorrowful kind of sound. So anyways, I did get a chance to ask him a few questions, like how he got into composing and the doujin community. And what he said was, in 1982, I got interested in game music from a record that I got. It was simply called Video Game Music. I wonder what was on that. Yeah. Video no, Game Music? I, I'm not sure to look it up. I didn't really find it. Uh, maybe he misspoke. I don't know. And uh, then he said, around 1985, he started kind of copying MML into the PC-88 basic language. And then in 1990, he began announcing his own stuff as Dojin releases. He said, that was the reason I ended up getting scouted for TGL. My earlier job was in art and animation, since they were looking for an arranger or composer, you know, somebody who knew FM sound chips. But that job wasn't really starting until the following year. So basically every night I would, you know, study composing and gradually through self-taught methods, I'd start kind of like learning how to work in sound. And that's how I, you know, did most of my career. Yeah, no, that's pretty amazing. But in case you're not familiar with TGL, it's a software development company from Osaka that stands for Technical Group Laboratory. And they were responsible for a few games like Princess Quest R, Advanced Variable Geo 2, the Farland Saga games, and a pretty big PC title in Japan called Chocolate Made Cafe Kurio. <laughs> It's an awesome title. Yeah, it's Japanese, you know, you know go figure. Um, but TGL was interesting because uh, when he mentioned that, I was like, TGL, where have I heard that name? It must be from the Farland Saga games. Yeah. Uh, that's the only thing because they don't have a, like a huge list of stuff. They were a software development company, so not just games. They actually did other technologies and right, stuff. Right, right. It just happens to be that Farland Saga kind of yeah. took off. Yeah, that one was one that definitely stood out on the list for me. Right. Anyways, uh, I also asked him uh, where the name Firecracker came from, because I mean, that was like the first thing I wanted to Mm -hmm. ask him, like, what's up with his name? And he says, I was originally a huge YMO fan, Yellow Magic Orchestra. We've heard that from like nearly everybody. Yeah, they're big. They're huge. Yeah. And he says, when I heard video game music, that record, I got the name from a song called Firecracker, which they did early on when they formed around 1978. So YMO had this this album or it's like a single called firecracker and that's mm-hmm. where the name kind of came from it's pretty cool yeah interesting it's s- always interesting yeah. to see where like you know people's names come you know their their aliases come from or the way that they name different companies or games or you know in this case you know their their albums so. yeah do you want to hear just like a few seconds of that track oh yeah just yeah. like 10 seconds or something <laughs> got that 70s feel oh, yeah that's that's pretty rad I mean, this is the 70s late yeah. 70s you know no it was it neat really to, being done yeah it was neat to hear like that kind of funky beat in there with some you know traditional japanese music sounds so yeah it's kind of nice yeah i like that so aside from ymo i asked him if he had any specific game composers that he was a fan of and he said definitely toshia yamanaka was a big one especially for his composition on star cruiser yeah for the pc88 that's a cool cool soundtrack. Yeah, that one's on VGM Rips. That's where I've listened to it. Yep, that's on VGM Rips. You can listen to it right now. Just go to vgmrips.net, do a search right in the, you know, in the search field and you can listen to it along with us. Yeah. <laughs> um no, it's it's a, it's a great soundtrack and a great composer. And uh so lastly I asked him I said, uh, you know, you, you've been pretty active in composition, you know, since you started all the way up kind of until now, uh just a few years ago. Uh are you doing anything recently? And he said, "Uh no, not really. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. Yep. <laughs> they just kept it simple. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, if he's not doing anything, then he's just not doing anything. 
<laughs> well, we got some awesome music to play from them today that yeah. you know was released in 1992. So we're, we're we're set for a while. Yeah. So our next track is actually another arranged track from a game called Atomic Robo Kid on the arcade. The track is called BGME, and it's actually an unused track in the game. That was BGME, the unused track from the game Atomic Robo Kid on the arcade, composed by Meccano Associates and arranged by Kemuel. Meccano Associates? Yeah. Making an appearance again, man. Yeah. It's it's funny how they keep popping up. Yeah. Kasatani, man. He's just a, he's lurking around. You never know <laughs> when he's going to pop up. This track is awesome. Yeah. Really it, good. It's laser fast. I mean, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> he says in the internal text, he's like, really, UPL? Like, you're not even going to release a game music CD? Yeah. I mean, it's they, a they, shame that they didn't. They I mean, this didn't. This is ridiculous. Yeah. This is an awesome track. And so I'm glad he did a, rearr- you know, a rearrangement of it because um, it's another way for us to listen to uh, a different version of this track. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool track to begin with, too. The uh, arcade version is is stellar. Obviously, you know, we've talked about Makano Associates before, so we know what to expect. Mm-hmm. But um, cool track. This one has um, just a lot of flourish, a lot of... It, again very busy right um, but it's it's excellent track yeah no it's it gets going real fast real quick and it has a lot of really cool slides and uh, stuff like that and then right towards the end it just kicks it up a whole another notch I was like oh my god I can't handle anymore like yeah. I'm so happy that's about the loop now it's it's almost like seizure inducing yeah. at the end there so I'm just really happy there's not like a light show like set to this song because <laughs> if you, even if you didn't have epilepsy I'm sure you would have it after this your so. epilepsy yeah Anyways, let's get into our next track. This is called Wagi Agare Pawa, composed by Gamadelic again, arranged by Kemu. That was Wagi Agare Pawa, another gamadelic track arranged by Kimmel. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I know. It's really fun. Another really fast paced track. Yeah. You can tell that that's kind of like what he likes to do is really fast paced. But I thought this one had a little bit more of a heartfelt or even like a longing feeling to it. Like it really? wasn't just like intense, fast paced action. There was a little bit of drama to it, I guess. Yeah, I do like the, the little. Ooh. Yeah, I, they were fun for a, a while. I got a little <laughs> bit tired of them. Um, and one of my favorite parts of the track was when they dropped off. Not because they dropped off, but I mm-hmm. really liked the ending of the track. I thought it was really cool. Um, and it just was a nice 
a nice way to end a, a really well done track. Yeah, so I I really like when the track starts going into kind of like the dun 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 yeah, dun 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 and then you get the um, then you get the melody a little bit later on. It's kind of delayed. It's kind of in late. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. It kind of sets up the track, gives it you know some some changes, some dynamics that uh, I don't know make it a little more enjoyable to listen mm -hmm. to. This game, you might recognize this track because it's from Midnight Resistance in the arcade mm -hmm. uh, by Daddy East, obviously, um, and, which is an awesome soundtrack already. But this is a pretty cool arrangement. Yeah, it's always great to see what someone does a little differently while still keeping it somewhat you know, similar. Yeah, but I think we are starting to get a good look at his style even a little bit more than right. before. And, uh, you know, moving forward into these next tracks, I think it's going to be even more pronounced. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have a track called Running Up, which is the bass enhanced version, which was an original track by Shinji Hosoe.
You just heard Running Up, the bass enhanced version, originally from a game called Dirt Fox in the Arcade, composed by Shinji Hosoe, arranged by Kemul. This is this is an awesome track. I mean, the bass enhanced, you can, that slap bass is all over the place. Yeah, man. it's very bassy. Yeah. Man, it's a long track. It's yeah. like five something minutes almost. And, uh, you know, I love it. I can listen to the whole thing through without getting bored because you get those really cool solos. You get like one or two different solos in there. It's, mm-hmm. it's wild. A lot of jazz, really Hosoe stuff. Yeah, and this track is just so much slower paced by comparison right. you know, from the earlier stuff. But I have a feeling that if it wasn't as, as slow paced, it's it would be a lot shorter track. If it was more in, in the style we've heard before. <laughs> it would be it like would a two-minute track. Yeah, the same number of notes, but it would just be condensed together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is a great version. It's, mm-hmm. It sounds so much cleaner, I think, than the uh, the original. I You know, it's kind of hard to compare because yeah, it's two the, different sound chips. The stuff. original is still really cool, but this one is right. a lot more punchy and uh, if you get a little bit more toe-tappy feel and with that bass, that really funky, fun feeling that mm-hmm. really stands out a lot. Yeah, and I think with the YM2608, uh, you know, the drum samples and stuff, it's just, it's killer. Mm-hmm. It, it really rocks in the percussion department. Um, This, you know, compared to the original, this is System, uh, Namco System 2. So it would have been the YM2151 and the Namco C140 mm-hmm. chip. Uh, but I think this version, you know, is... You could have easily put the 2608 into the Namco hardware and, you know, you would have gotten a really good soundtrack I oh, think, yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's move on to our next track. This is actually a track called Flash, 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 composed by Yuzo Kushiro, arranged by Kemmel. And uh, it's from a game called Bosconian. Flash, 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 composed by Yuzo Kushiro, arranged by Kimmel, and this is from Bosconian on the Sharp X68000. As soon as I, I saw that title, I knew that this was going to be right up Kimmel's alley. Oh, yeah. Um, super intense, like crazy wild, um, and I mean, there was a great foundation started. Anything from Kushiro is insane, yep. um, but uh, this was a really, really cool track. This is a legendary soundtrack already, and the game right. is kind of weak. It's kind of like an Asteroids clone. Uh, but yeah. you know, well, the- we've seen a lot of games that have <laughs> right. insane soundtracks, and Hole the chaser. game is not worth anything. So. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is really cool. There's a lot of um, changes. You almost could take out the bass and rhythm, uh, you know, all the drums and everything, and turn that melody into a really nice ballad mm-hmm. uh, for like a slow pace, like an, almost like an RPG or something. Have some really nice um, kind of romantic, you know, ballad. Yeah, I like it had that. a very grand feel for how fast paced and intense it was, mm-hmm. and 
I really like where the track transitions into something very different. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost feels like something darker, like it has rolled in. And then it goes back to being really heroic and fast paced again. I thought that was really neat. A nice little, nice little touch that um, is just fun to break up with all that fast paced like drama. Yeah, this must have been a pain in the butt to like convert over to and rearrange for uh, the YM 2608. Must have well, been a lot of work. It seems like this is what Kemo likes to do. Yeah. Well, and, and you know he had a lot of help using uh, the driver. Mm -hmm. You know this driver specifically was PMD 3.3. PMD was the professional music driver mm -hmm. that uh, was created by Masahiro Kajihara. Right. And uh, we had him on the uh, Hole Chaser episode, episode 62. Yeah, somewhere in the in the lower 60s. But yeah. yeah. That was he, so awesome to talk to him about this. I mean, this driver that so many people use yeah, and, and we're such gonna, a legendary thing. Right. We're going to hear it like countless times, uh, you know, over the course of this show, you know, mm -hmm. over the course of the, you know, continuation of this show. So it's kind of cool to have that reference point that uh, we got some really good information from him. But yeah, just a really killer track. Uh, what do we got next? All right, next up we have another arrangement from an X68000 game called Martial Age. The track is called Activation and it's arranged by Kimul. Alright, you just heard Activation, originally composed by Keo for Martial Age on the X68000, and this version was arranged by Kemul. They're all arranged by Kemul. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, this is a cool track. It's got uh, almost kind of like this anime kind of feeling to me. I can see that, Like yeah. there should be some lyrics in there. Yeah. Uh, some like high-pitched girl squealing ly lyrics, you know, like... Yeah. I don't know. To I me, liked it. To me, this track was... Uh, it felt like it was made by computers for computers to listen to it's so <laughs> synthy it was so insane but there was so much going on um i really like this track a lot i mean it was there's so much to listen to and it kind of takes your ear on a journey mm -hmm. and then those nice uh bells or kind of chimes that were mixed in really was a nice addition to all the really heavy synth so i thought it kind of brought you back to kind of let you hear more uh con you know continue hearing it and um, I just really like this track a lot, actually. Yeah, that that lead guitar has a very uh, has a very like '80s guitar sound mm -hmm. to it. You know, that flying V kind of, but it's like has like this crazy distortion on it too. Yeah. So I think he did an excellent job kind of porting this the sound over. Mm -hmm. I haven't really heard the original, so yeah, neither <laughs> have I. This is my first experience, actually. So there's kind of a little story behind that. In the uh, liner notes, he says, you know, this is from Marshall Age. It's uh, so it's an X68000 game. Uh, by this small company called Heshindo. And so he says, please consider future Tenshindo releases. Haha. Ha. And I think he's laughing there because he actually got employed to do stuff from oh. them. <laughs> and this was, I think, a little bit before his time. But this game wasn't very popular, uh, apparently. So he says, um, those of you who've actually beat this game would understand it. But this is the song uh, that plays when the character goes, I still have this power. And he starts laughing hysterically about <laughs> it. I, I don't know. There's got to be some kind of in jo inside joke there, or maybe it's super cheesy or something. And yeah. I don't know. 
But I mean, if if I had some crazy power, I would want to track like this plane behind me. So, <laughs> so people were like, "Wow!" Like I don't really yeah, want to mess with this guy. Don't mess with this guy. That's what I think when I'm driving home in my car all the time. I'm like, oh, this is my theme song. And then I just keep the windows rolled up. You know? Yeah. Uh, anyways, I think that's about it for the day. We have one. Do you want to play another track? Yeah. No, we did have a like a bonus track kind of stored away, but uh, we've been just having so much fun today. Let's. I think we'll just, just play it. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. This is from a game called No Ten Chokugeki 3 by Iron Gear. The track is called Lost of Consciousness. Right, that was Lost of Consciousness, composed by Kemmel. Uh, this was from No Ten Chokugeki Three by Iron Gear, and I'm glad we actually played this because this is another original. Mm-hmm. So it was a good way to uh, kind of yeah. another original track. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty uh, pretty heavy compared to some of the other tracks, and there was that orchestra hit in the beginning that just <laughs> reminded me of Konami like, yeah, right away. Yeah, but yeah. this track really develops into something really cool with a lot of really awesome touches and really amazing note transitions and everything. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a fun track. You know, this whole music disc, there's a lot of good stuff that we're not playing today uh, that's noteworthy, but the whole idea for the music volumes is we, we just want to play a few tracks that we like, uh, give a little bit of information, yeah. kind of our, our thought on it, and, uh, you know, leave it at that. So hope yeah. you guys enjoyed the selection today. Yeah, I love the mix-up of originals and arranged tracks. Yeah, it's cool. And this is the first time we've really heard from uh, Kimmel on the show. And Mm -hmm. we got so many more to kind of pick through that uh, you're going to hear some more Firecracker in the future. Anyways, so today we covered the Firecracker Music Collection Volume A, Comiket 42 Special, composed, uh, graphics, everything, program by Kimmel. If you want to know more about the show, you can check us out online at pixelateaudio.com for show notes and track list, as well as links to all of our social media, which we're on pretty much everything. Pretty much everywhere. If you guys like the show, uh, you know, consider giving us a review on iTunes. That always means a lot. Uh, we also started a Patreon mm-hmm. a few months back, and it's going awesome. I uh, want to give a shout out to our latest patron, uh, Joachim Gustafsson. I hope I'm saying that right. Joachim yeah. Gustafsson. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you're directly supporting the show, and it makes us feel good that we have uh, support and your help behind our back. Oh yeah, it's definitely very humbling, and uh, you know we weren't sure if this was gonna work at all, but it's it's working out better than we had expected, and it's just very uplifting and helps us work on more episodes yeah and if you guys are curious about the patreon you can go to our website there's a link there you can also go to uh, patreon.com slash pixelated audio and we're doing a few kind of um you know kind of behind the scenes extra videos yeah uh this month i'm gonna put out a little video and uh yeah it's just a, a great way to support the show so thank you guys so much so far and you can listen to some of our past episodes if this is uh, your first. If this is your first show, uh, definitely go back and listen to some of our others. Yeah, some of our most recent episodes are Aromano no Kaseki on the Famicom Disk System, which was a really cool episode. Right. And then there was Mitsume Gatoru, where we had Hiroyuki Iwaski on as a guest, which was just really amazing. Yeah, that's always it's such a good feeling, uh, you know, getting words directly from the composer about you know a certain soundtrack. Mm-hmm. We always learn so much. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you didn't like it, let us know. These Our last music disc actually did pretty well, and yeah. we got a lot of good feedback on it. So And it was quite a while ago, so we were overdue. Overdue. So the track taking out the show is another track from this music disc. It's called Exert All Your Powers. So might be a little intense. Uh, it's from Firecracker Supersonic Shooter. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you back in a few weeks for the next episode.